let's take a moment to appreciate how spectacular that knockout finish was by our man Anthony Joshua. Now, before we get into the post fight, I think it's kind of worth noting that unfortunately this was a very, for me at least, a very disappointing card. With the exception of AJ, I thought it was, um, on paper, it could have been a, a fantastic card to watch, but it just, I mean, the second most entertaining was probably Luke Campbell. And even for a boxing purist, it's difficult to watch 10, 12 rounds of a fighter who has the has no ability to hurt his or her opponent. Again, you can appreciate the footwork and the spin-offs, but it's it it's doesn't make for compelling viewing as far as, as I'm concerned. And I, I absolutely appreciate fine footwork. I mean I'm Lomachenko. Probably Lomachenko's number one fan. But Loma feels like he's doing serious damage, and if he isn't damaging them, he just feels like he's bamboozling his opponent. But yeah, I think Luke Campbell was probably the, the next most entertaining, and that probably speaks volumes about a, a very not a weak. It was a very strong car, but just some some bad matchups maybe and some weak performances. Most notably, the letdown of um, Macaulay and Askin. I I privately thought Akoli was going to win that by knockout. I didn't make a video on because I just didn't have time. But it, it was a pretty poor card. And Akoli throwing the same overhand right, step forward, grab, overhand right, step forward, grab. And Askin really playing along to the tune of that. I appreciate that Akoli had like three point deductions. But overall, quite disappointing. Uh, David Price, I don't want to spend too long speaking about the undercards, but I can't bring myself to hate David Price. I just can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. I love my biz. Even, I mean, I, I think likelihood he was just tired and wanted to pull out before he got knocked out. I don't know that. It's just my opinion. But even then, I know that's that's bang out of order if he's done that. But I, I can't bring myself to, to hate the guy. I think he's a pretty torrid time in the last five years, maybe. Well, I don't remember what his first loss was, but I remember it very clearly to Tony Thompson. But anyway, that aside, it was all made up for in, to me, a thrilling bout with, with Joshua and Povetkin. I mean, that's heavyweight boxing at its highest level in our era, I believe. Now, you could make an argument that, you know, in the first couple of rounds, especially Joshua was being caught. But what he was being caught by was cruiser, maybe even light heavyweight kind of speed hooks. But at 39 was lightning fast, jumping in with these quick left hooks, overhand rights, that they're, watch, it, where, watch where his feet were planted, watch his body positioning, he's, he's always in balance. How he generates some of the angles he created for those overhand rights was just astonishing. And I don't think there are many heavyweights fighting right now that could have walked out or survived those first two rounds. I'm not saying that they were an onslaught, but they could have led to, to so much more. I thought the way Joshua adjusted to that, and I, I don't know what format you were watching this on, but I was watching it through Sky Pay-Per-View, and I thought that Frotch especially was putting a lot of the, a lot of Joshua's kind of improved and kind of successes down to Povetkin's tiring and I didn't think that Povetkin was tiring I thought he was just being patient he didn't see as many opportunities I thought Joshua's back foot game was fantastic a lot of these hooks just went winging past very elusive for such a big guy I mean he's huge honestly I mean Anthony Joshua is absolutely huge and to see his nimbleness I'm not saying he's the next coming of Ali but compare and contrast a man of a similar height David Price with the movement of Anthony Joshua, with a guy as quick as Povetkin. I thought it was astonishing. I gave the first two rounds to Povetkin. I gave rounds three, four, and six to AJ. I thought Povetkin won the, the fifth. So I had it three apiece going into the seventh. And I actually said um, to a friend that I could see the ending in the seventh round. Um, I mean, live. I was like, I can... Because Joshua seemed to be timing Povetkin a little bit more. I thought maybe between kind of seven and nine. I think a couple of people predicted seven to nine. 
I actually thought that Povetkin didn't fight the right fight for me, although he was, I thought he was very, very impressive. I would have much preferred he didn't kind of exude that energy in rounds one and two. I would much prefer he turtled, sidestepped, uh, you know, be jabbed. He, I mean, he didn't throw any jabs. All he threw was power shots. And I think that would have been better spent uh, between rounds seven and nine. As it was, Joshua wasn't particularly high volume rounds one to six, especially not rounds one and two. He just, you know, got used to the style of Povetkin through very few combinations. And I think, as I said, Povetkin would have been better served holding off until those middle rounds and then applying some of this quick pressure. And I appreciate you might lose a little bit of kind of crispness and freshness by the middle rounds, but I think trying to knock out Joshua in the first two rounds is was, was difficult. I mean, Povetkin at his fastest is trying to match Joshua at his fastest. But I, I thought it was a fantastic fight to watch, absolutely thrilling, engaging in every round, unsure what the outcome was going to be. And I said, as we got to the end of six and into seven, I thought maybe, you know, Joshua seems to be, he felt, looked very comfortable towards the end of the fight. He seemed to have Povetkin measured. Still getting caught occasionally with, you know what? Yeah, I said, he's fighting a guy that looked physically in a different weight class and, you know, coincidentally or consequently fought at this a similar kind of speed. Very, very snap, snappy, quick, fast hooks. Nice uppercuts, beautiful punch selection from Povetkin. I and mean, again, if you're if you're a serious, I'm not a serious, but if you're a long time boxing fan, watching a heavyweight mix it up with that to me was was very very impressive. I, I enjoyed the fight immensely, and I'm going to watch it back. And I think maybe with a bit of relief, because I'm a not so much a Joshua fan, but I'm a huge fan of anybody that brings this much attention to the sport that I love. So I was absolutely rooting for Joshua to win, but I I still wanted Povetkin to put on a great showing, which I think he definitely did. To be able to do that at 39 again is just absolutely incredible. I thought it's a, a wonderful learning opportunity for Joshua. I thought his jab was a little bit weak. He kind of had his lead arm come down at his waist. But again, I think that was maybe to open up opportunities to the body. He was definitely touching up that body. And I think Malinaji, by the way, as a, as a side, is absolutely my most favorite color commentator. He's just... He, I always Emmanuel Stewart used to do this, but always seemed to say exactly what I was thinking as a viewer. It encapsulates that perfectly. It's a very, very clear way of articulating, pun on the name, <laughs> a very clear way of articulating exactly what's transpiring in, in the ring. I think he also had it even at the end of um, the sixth as well. So, but yeah, he made a very good point about Joshua touching the body, touching the body, chest, and then bang, overhand right. And again, finishing in the style that he did is, is just, you can't teach that. He was so accurate, so... I mean, look how many of his his shots landed. Just, again, magnificent finish. I also think it's worth worth noting that at no point in the fight did Joshua clinch Povetkin. And for anyone that, that was looking for a blueprint on how to beat Povetkin, Joshua didn't follow that in any way whatsoever. There was no jab-jab-grab. In fact, I don't think Joshua really utilized the jab that the jab to the stomach was working, but he left ahead pretty much alone, which of course isn't how Klitschko fights. So he made well, him and his team made this fight their own. They drew up their own blueprint and absolutely destroyed an incredible, an incredibly game, and very very fit. And uh, Povetkin, I was just wonder. I really I'm looking forward to watching it back. Actually, a really good fight. I t and I have to a uh, second side note. Why why do we have so much hate for Eddie Hearn? I th I think what he's done for boxing isn't short of anything, or it, it's it's magnificent. A miracle even is for me as a boxing fan. He's brought so much attention again to our sport. He's paying boxers well. I mean, look for the boxers that complain about Eddie Hearn that, that are fighting under him. They don't exist. Even the ones that aren't, they're no longer fighting with him. None of them seem to complain about him. He's never in court. He's never suing some boxer to a breach of contract. He's treating people fairly. He's selling out stadiums with the help, huge help of Andy Joshua. But he's guided Joshua. And Joshua, Joshua at his 22nd fight, look at his resume already. You know, <laughs> compare Joshua and Wilder's careers and the resumes. It's absolutely, it's chalk and cheese. So I, I think a huge hats off to Eddie Hernan to match room.
again I think they've done great things for a sport that I absolutely love I've elevated it to new highs I think highs that maybe for a while we thought we would never get back to and you know we have a heavyweight champion of the world that is the personification of, of for me of everything we want in the sport some people don't like AJ because he seems a bit too clean cut but I mean I think he's he's exactly what we need for the sport inspiring young inspiring the youth training hard dedicating himself to the sport and providing the results listening to what people want and doing what he can to deliver against promises anyway this isn't a, a video dedicated entirely to praising anthony joshua i just think that credit where credit is due i thought his performance was again i, I appreciate he got tagged in the first couple of rounds but i think that's to be expected from somebody as fast as Pavetkin. I think he dealt with it very quickly, he learned from it very quickly and he adapted. And I appreciate those hooks weren't missing by much in the kind of latter rounds, but they were still missing. And uh, that isn't, that's, I think that's an underrated addition to, to AJ's game, being that elusive. And it will probably go over the heads of some people. And uh, people like Dwyer, for example, I know he was really quite bullish on Povetkin here. I think he still picked up the hedge with a Joshua knockout, but I, I certainly didn't miss the subtleties in Joshua's quite a lot or quite a few times Pavet can miss with double left hooks just with again Pavetkin's half the size not half the size but he's much smaller than Joshua and he cuts off the ring well you know he, he covers distance quickly he's got quick feet and Joshua was still able to move and at no point did you think Joshua was running and again he wasn't really just hiding behind a jab either I thought it was a, a great fight very interesting dynamic the shame the undercard paled in comparison but I'm glad the the headline fight delivered for us because it would have been very sad if it was like a, a reenactment of Klitschko's defeat of Povetkin however many years five six years ago that was I think and again just just a third side note don't underestimate Povetkin's resume with the exception of Klitschko he's beat everyone absolutely everyone he's, he's been in a ring with impressively so as well there's been a few they weren't as clear cut but and again, he's just always in, always in shape. Always comes to fight. And, you know, very impressive for both fighters. What happens next? I mean, I would much rather see AJ fight Wilder. I think Fury might beat AJ in a very similar fashion to how he beat Klitschko. But it's bad for the sport. It's uninteresting. It's low volume. It's Unless you're a huge Fury fan, it's it's not entertaining to watch. And I want the sport to be as popular as it can be. You know, I want I want to be entertained myself. And while I actually had bet on Fury to beat Klitschko, I remember because I'd also bet on Holly Holm to beat Ronda Rousey. It's a good couple of weeks. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 if you watch that fight back, you're not missing anything. You're really not. Uh, but I, I think Fury would, maybe not in his current state, but I think that he would be all wrong for AJ. I think AJ would end up chasing the fight and it would be very difficult especially because Fury has such unusually long arms very difficult to get past that anyway we're still in kind of past 14 minutes now so I'll wrap it up hope you guys and girls enjoyed the fight let me know what you thought and maybe an early prediction where what do we think is going to happen with Fury and Wilder if the fight does indeed happen thanks folks I'll see you soon